All right, guys, here we go. If you thought yesterday was hard, get ready for today's lesson. It's a lot harder. Uh, cameras are gonna give you so much more control over your photography when compared to a cell phone. However, the cell phone creates a photo that is based off of professional photographer's input, and so you get a really nice streamlined, pre-processed photo that works really, really well. The goal in this class is that you guys would learn how to use a camera and how to compose a photo. You've had great photos that you've composed earlier in the year, and now we're gonna really dial in how to use the camera. So today's lesson is gonna tackle two major ideas. That would be aperture, or f-stop, and shutter speed, and their effect on your EV equation, or your exposure value, or correct exposure. So, follow along with me here. Let's see what we get. We should have a screen pop up right about now. All right, guys, follow along with me. Uh, you're gonna learn the EV equation today. In addition to that, students can independently create accurate exposure with a variety of camera setting priorities. The two priorities are gonna be f-stop priority or shutter speed priority. Okay, so you're gonna learn what makes an EV equation. It's coming up in just a second. What is overexposure and what is underexposure? What do those mean? Learn what aperture is. Also, you should know that aperture are also f-stops. F-stop is the name that the size of the aperture being used is, right? So you've got your aperture. The size of the opening is called the f-stop. It's basically the same thing. One is the name, one is the object. The aperture will let a controlled amount of light in to the camera and also adjust the depth of field. We're gonna dig more into that here in just a second. Learn sh what shutter speed is. What? Put a what in there. Learn what shutter speed is. It is the amount of time light is exposed to the photo sensor and also controls speed capture, making images either blurry or stopping movement in time. Okay? Learn what ISO is. Uh, well, it's the level of sensitivity of the camera and it's the amount of active pixels. I don't know if that's what this is there. That's what I'm saying to you, okay? So, the three, four little windows on here that we're gonna focus on. We're gonna focus on this. This is our shutter speed. It is always a fraction. It is a fraction of a second. For example, this is one-fifth, one-fifth of a second, all right? That's how fast that is. Your cameras will go up to one four thousandth of a second. Professional cameras will go up to one eight thousandth of a second. And I'm sure there's others that go faster. I don't know, I don't have one of those. Okay, that is our, oh, get back here. Shutter speed. This is our f-stop. It'll always be written as f and then a number, okay? The smaller the number, the larger the f-stop, the larger the number, the smaller the f-stop, much like gauges. Okay, and then we've got our ISO. This is the level of active pixels in comparison to the level of light sensitivity of the camera. We're gonna get to why that's important and why you need to know that in a little bit. And then lastly, this beautiful bar right here. This is our EV equation. Okay, and we're gonna learn how that equation takes into account our shutter speed, our f-stop and our ISL, okay? All that has to work together to get our desired exposure, which isn't necessarily always the correct exposure. Here we go. The EV equation. So, shutter plus f-stop plus ISO will equal your exposure. So, shutter speed, which is gonna be how long your photo sensor is exposed to light, open and then close. Okay, f-stop is going to be how much light is let in. Is it a lot of light or is it a small amount of light? So how much light is being let in for how much time is it being exposed? And that is all compared to or on top of how sensitive your photo sensor is, that's your ISO. All those equal your exposure, okay? 
we've got three major EV values. Right here in the middle, zero EV, also known as EV, that is a correct exposure. Doesn't mean it's the exposure you want, but that is the correct exposure. It is based off of what is the most average light source in your image. For example, all this background space would be the average light source. It tries to make that middle gray. Okay, what is the average light source? We want everything to be visible and the shadows and the highlights can kind of fall off. We don't care. Everything has to be based off of middle gray. That is correct exposure. Sometimes you want to overexpose it. For example, if there's a shadow that you're focusing on or a flower or a leaf and you want it to be brighter or more intense, you might overexpose it. What you're gonna do, you're going to maybe overexpose it by one. So this is a one right here, this is a plus one, and we would call that plus one EV. Okay, plus one EV. This here would be plus two EV. This one here would be plus three EV. Okay, maybe you want your image to be darker. Maybe you're photographing a face and it's just too bright. The light source is too hot and you want to darken up your exposure so you see more detail in highlights. You don't want them so bright. Then you're going to underexpose your image. So in that case, we get minus one EV or minus two EV or minus three EV. Your cameras, I think, will go all the way to minus 5 EV or plus 5 EV. And if you're going, Mr. Riggins, you keep saying EV, what does that mean? Exposure value. Your exposure value. Is it a correct exposure value or is it an overexposed exposure value or is it an underexposed exposure value? Now, how can I get a plus EV? So let's just say my f stop for correct exposure is 1 60th of a second. And we're going to add that to, let's just say, f4.5, okay? And you're photographing at 200 ISO. That will equal a correct exposure, or EV. And we know that for that one particular picture, it changes every picture, by the way, but for that one particular picture, that is the correct exposure. Let's say I want to overexpose. I want to make it brighter. There's a couple things I can do. I can increase the amount of time my shutter is open. So I could say one, one, no, just kidding. Cut. <sighs> Take it back a little bit. One thirtieth of a second plus the same f-stop plus the same ISO, which in this case is 200, will equal a plus one EV. What that means is I have, we'll do this in blue here, a longer amount of time that my shutter is open, exposing my photo sensor to more light, making it brighter. I did not change my f-stop, I did not change my ISO, and I ended up getting a brighter image, okay? Delete, 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 delete. Yeah, I wish I had an eraser, that'd be cool. Or on that same token, let's say your correct exposure is 1 60th, F4.5 at 200 ISO gets you a correct exposure. Maybe you wanna make it brighter, but you cannot change your shutter speed. If I change my shutter speed, make it slower, my image will be blurry. I can change something else. I could stick with 1 60th of a second, plus I want it brighter, so I need to make my f-stop bigger, allow more light in. So now I'm gonna do f1.8. I'm gonna keep the same ISO, and that will equal plus one EV. If you found that confusing, rewind all this and watch it again. All right, so all I need to do to get a brighter image is either increase the amount of time my shutter is open or increase the opening of my aperture. And I can get a brighter exposure or I can overexpose my image. Okay, uh, let's get rid of all that. The same is true if we go the opposite direction. Okay, let's say I want a minus two EV. 
So what I need to do, I need to change either my f-stop or my shutter speed so that it is darker. So let's say I change my shutter speed. I'm now going to photograph at 1 25th of a second plus the same f-stop which is 4.5 plus the same ISO which is 200. Now my image has been exposed half as long. It was a 60th of a second exposure. Open, 60th of a second, close. Now it's 1 25th of a second, so it's open, close. Less time means less light means underexposed. The same is true. I could go through and make my f-stop smaller and I'd make my picture darker. Okay, so what I want you to understand is that the EV equation is how does shutter speed, open and close of the uh, shutter, how does aperture, the amount, more or less, more or less light, and the sensitivity level or the ISO of the camera all work together to create a desired exposure. Do you want it correctly exposed? Do you want it overexposed? Or do you want it underexposed? This is pretty complicated. If you take my advanced photo class, you're going to be doing the exact same thing. You should learn it a lot. I learn it and relearn it every year. Now it's the aperture's turn. How does an aperture work? What does an aperture look like? Help me understand this, Mr. Riggins. All right, well, that's what I'm here for, guys. F-stop, also known as aperture. Your aperture is a physical object that either opens, to let more light in or closes to let less light in. The name we give the opening of that aperture is the f-stop. So take a look at me, or take, don't look at me, look at the screen that's over here. f2.8. For this particular setup, that is the largest setting. So we have a lot of opening, allowing a lot of light in. Okay? Now, we can go down that line, F4 means it gets a little bit smaller and now we have a less amount of light. F5.6 gets even smaller, we have an even less amount of light and you get the picture all the way down over here to F22, just a little bit of light is allowed in, okay? So if it's a really, really sunny day out, you might have to photograph over here at F22 just so you can get an image because it's so bright. You want to limit the intensity or the amount of sun rays or light rays coming into your camera and shutter speed is not doing the job for you. Now this has a profound effect on what we call depth of field. The depth of field is this, how much of your image is in focus, right? So right now, this is in focus and I'm in focus. If I change the aperture of my video camera to let's say f4.5, I would be in focus and my background would be blurry. So we have something called depth of field. Okay, that's this chart right here. So the more open, the smaller amount of things can be in focus this way, right? Camera to background, the less amount can be in focus. Wow, the more closed, the greater depth of field or the more amount can be in focus. The smaller the light waves getting in, the further depth of field or the more amount of things can be in focus. Okay, those are the visual effects of the f-stop. And here is an example for you. All right, guys, um, f2.8. They focused here on this tree, the foreground and the background is incredibly blurry. You can see right back here, very, very blurry. This object here, this tree is closer, so it's more in focus, but the background is tremendously blurry. Now, we're going to close down the f-stop to f4. You notice now, here, this background is less blurry than this background, but it is still blurry. We are still focusing on the foreground tree. Let's squeeze that f-stop down even more to 5.6. Now you can see here the background is even more in focus. The foreground hasn't changed much, but the middle ground is getting more in focus. So we're increasing the amount whoop, of space that can be in focus with the smaller aperture. 
Let's continue to shrink down the aperture. Here's F8. You can see the background is more in focus. F11. And this one here is F16. You can see at F16, we can actually see the background. So again, let's just pretend this here. This is the size of the opening in the aperture. The smaller it gets, the more amount of stuff can be in focus. We call that the depth of field. Now, in addition to affecting the depth of field, aperture also affects the amount of light that can come into the camera plane or the photo plane. So, f1.2, wide open, overexposing our model. So the f-stop controls the amount of light coming in and the depth of field available for you to focus. Next thing, guys, shutter speed. This is probably the most common thing people equate with photography. You can see if I turn on my camera, uh, you will hear it. Let's see if it's gonna focus on here. That click, that's the shutter opening and closing. You can see it right there. Opening and closing. Uh, let me show you a slow shutter speed. Slow. And then fast. Okay, so it is the amount of time your mirror pops up and exposes your photo sensor to light. Oh, off. All right, guys, so we have got, uh, let's do blue for this, a couple different shutter speeds to see here. One second, one full second, our windmill here shows lots of motion, lots and lots of motion, it's spinning very, very quickly, and it's constantly, those light waves are moving, and so our image will be blurry. At a quarter of a second, so one fourth of a second, uh, you can start to see some individual colors separate out when you took the picture. So what that means is, let me switch over here to green, the blue started moving here and stopped moving here when that picture was taken. It's very quickly, but that's why it looks like that, okay? Um, so now at 1 15th of a second, you can see here, there's still some blurriness. I'll go back to my blue. At 1 60th of a second, all right? So take a second, chop it up into 60 little pieces. One of those little pieces, you can see here, it's a little blurry, but it's pretty, pretty clear what this object is. At 1 60th of a second, so even faster, the center of this is almost clear. The outside is still just a little blurry. You probably would want to photograph this at 1 2 50th of a second, and that would pause it in time. You have a crystal clear, looks like it's not even moving. So the longer the shutter is open, or the slower the shutter speed, the longer it's open, the more motion you're going to see, but the more light it will let in for a longer amount of time, potentially overexposing your image. Okay, here's another example. This is probably 1 15th of a second. This here is probably 1 80th of a second. And this here is still kind of blurry. We've got some droplets we can see and some crispness right here. That's probably 1 25th, maybe 1 2 50th of a second. So you can see the slower your shutter speed, the more movement you're going to get in your photos. Okay, if you want to show cars driving by fast and getting a little bit of a blur, photograph slightly slower. However, if you're going to photograph below 1 60th of a second, you're going to need a tripod or something to set your camera on, or everything will be blurry because your hands are going to be shaking, things like that. Okay. Now, ISO. This is a lot. It's so much. I hope your brains don't explode. Okay, ISO. ISO is this, on your camera sensor, that's your camera sensor, right in there, that thing, that weird looking little reflective piece of stuff. That is your sensor, your photo sensor. And on that are pixels, little tiny pixels, and they are light sensitive, and they record a light and they stay with that light, all right? Now, if I photograph in bright light, 
I might want 100 ISO. It's not very sensitive, so it can handle bright light. If I'm photographing indoors or I'm photographing at night, I might want ISO 3200. My camera goes to ISO 125,000. It's crazy, okay? But the more sensitive your photo sensor is, the better you can photograph in dark, the worse quality your image is because the megapixels start clumping together doo -doo 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 -doo, and getting bigger, okay? So take a look at this with me here. 100 ISO, it is really smooth. There's not a lot of digital noise in that space. It's pretty clean now. Obviously there's pixelation because this picture was small and we've blown it up for this demonstration, but everything's very smooth and very clean. Once you get to ISO 800, you can start to see in these areas here, in these areas right up here, you start to see some more digital noise. However, in the bridge, it still looks pretty good. There's digital noise there, but in the bright areas, you don't see it quite as much. As we get to ISO 116, obviously even more graininess and digital noise is present. ISO 3200, even in the bright areas, uh, now in the really, even in the really dark areas right there, there's so much digital noise. Sometimes you have to photograph at 3200 ISO and that's just because you need to get the shot at no matter what costs. I would encourage you to always shoot as close to 100 as light and capabilities, shutter and aperture, will allow you to. The smaller the ISO number, the more active megapixels or the smaller they are, the clearer the picture. The larger the ISO, the more sensitive your photo plane is. However, the pixels are bigger and you're gonna get more digital noise. So, I would encourage you for this time right now, if you're in my beginning photo class, have your ISO set to auto. If you're in my advanced photo class, I would encourage you guys to photograph with your ISO at 100 if possible, no higher than 800 if possible. Always manipulate your shutter speed and aperture to make sure you are not uh, overexposing or underexposing your image, okay? Here's another example practicing changing ISO and getting the correct exposure. So for the, for the EV equation, my most important thing right now for this photo is ISO. I'm gonna change my ISO first, and then I'll change the other things second to get the correct exposure. You can see it, ISO 100 compared to ISO 100, and, uh, let's see, what is this, 12,900, how big the pixels are. The pixels are huge over here in this corner, and now you're gonna get really busy, really messy, really digitally enhanced, digitally noised images. If uh, you've gotta get the shot and there's no way not to, photograph in that high SO. 800 is pretty acceptable. Now remember, this is like, we're zoomed in a lot on this. 800's pretty darn acceptable. It looks pretty good. Um, and obviously, it gets worse the higher the ISO. Now, Mr. Riggins, why would I buy this camera for $700, or why would I buy the $1,200 uh, Canon 7D? Why would I buy the $4,000 Canon 5D? You get a larger sensor with better effective megapixels, which allows you to photograph at a larger number of ISO and get less digital noise. So you can get a larger photo sensor, you can photograph at 12,000 ISO, and it will look like 400 ISO on a more expensive camera. That's why you buy more expensive cameras. And go. All right, guys, so shutter plus f-stop plus ISO exposure value. Here's the question you have to ask yourself. What is your shot goal? What is it you wanna photograph? Are you photographing sports and you wanna pause that moment, the person's just catching the ball? Are you photographing that just that perfect moment where the person jumps over the ramp and they are caught in midair with their skateboard and they're paused in motion? Then your priority is speed. Maybe you're photographing uh, a still life and nothing's moving, you've got a tripod, you're outside, maybe doing the landscape, and it doesn't matter because nothing's moving, then maybe aperture or f-stop is the most important thing to you and that gets priority. 
Maybe you're photographing something for um, a magazine, maybe product photography, and you can have absolutely no digital noise, and ISO is the most important thing to you. You gotta pick what's the most important for your shot. We call that shot priority, okay? If speed is the most important thing to me, then I will do shot priority, or shutter priority, sorry. Shutter priority. If speed's the most important thing to that shot. What that means is I set my exposure speed first, and then I set my f-stop and ISO to get a correct exposure. It's called shutter priority. Maybe your depth of field and aperture is the most important thing to you. So you're gonna have aperture priority. You're gonna set your aperture first and then set your shutter speed or ISO to get the correct exposure, all right? Always keep your shooting goals in mind. Set it first and go from there. Now, this is, if you're in beginning class, you're gonna use preset modes. If you're in advanced class, you should be using manual. So for this one here, set it to TV for shutter priority. T set your dial mode to TV, time value priority. Then when you spin your selection dial, you will actually pick your shutter speed first and then it will automatically fill in aperture and ISO. If aperture is the most important thing to you, you're gonna click your dial mode to AV. It will set your aperture, you get to pick your aperture on the set dial, and then it will automatically pick a shutter speed and a ISO for you, okay? So in a recap, your shutter speed, your f-stop, your ISO, all work together to either give you a correct exposure, an overexposure, or an underexposure. underexposure okay keep that in mind here's a nice little chart that I like to use just to remind my students of the visual elements of this uh, EV equation setup so for example if I set my exposure or my f-stop to 1.4 that's gonna allow me to have a faster exposure because there's a lot more light in there however it's going to blur my background but it is gonna allow me to have a nice, clean ISO. Let's jump in the middle. Maybe I do a nice middle f-stop, f8. Well, if I photograph at 1 30th of a second, it's gonna be a little blurry. And my background is gonna be mostly in focus, but it's gonna be a little blurry. And unfortunately, because I have less light in there, I am gonna to have to increase my ISO to make that photo sensor more sensitive. Now, if I set this here to 32, well, everything's gonna be in focus. Shutter speed is gonna be really slow because there's very little light coming in. And my ISO will have to be really, really high to ensure that I get a good picture. Now, if you have a tripod, something to set your camera on there. You, my camera, are on a tripod, right? If I have a tripod and I set my camera on it, then you can have whatever ISO you want because it doesn't matter if your camera moves or not. You can photograph for 10 seconds and get a nice, clean, crisp photo. In fact, I have photographed on many occasions for 15 minutes at night, and so that way you can get the streak of stars happening, but you need a tripod for that to work. Okay, so this is a nice little chart here. Um, I'm gonna clear this out. What you should do if you're watching this on um, a tablet, you should screenshot this right now and keep this for your records. I might even put it as a handout in class later. Okay, Mr. Riggins, what am I doing? What is my assignment for today? Get ready, guys. It's a long one. It's going to make you think really hard. Now, if you don't have a DSLR and you decided to just stick with your cell phone, you still got to do this. You don't get out of it. And you have to do your best to make it look like you did this correctly. You're going to shoot these same photos in the same order with a cell phone or with a DSLR, and you're going to try to capture this same phenomenon. Your first set of photos, here we go. Task, do this in yellow. Whoosh. You must complete. Follow the shot list exactly. This is also in your handout, so you know it's there. Follow the shot list exactly. If you have to take extra photos, that is fine, but be sure to turn them in in the exact order. So shoot the following photos. So if you had to take extra photos, throw out the extras, 
keep the good ones, and turn them in in this exact order. Here we go. Your first few photos are going to be aperture priority. Set the camera to AV, aperture value, uh, on the setting dial. Now set your ISO to auto. If you're in beginning class, set it to auto. It's going to make your life a lot easier. If you're in advanced class, set it to 400, 100. You be the boss of it. Don't put it on auto. Uh, now take the following photos. Also, be sure to have imagery in the foreground, that's up here, and imagery in the middle ground, and imagery in the background. Also, take your lens, guys, and zoom it to 55, okay? Now, if you have a different kind of lens, find the number right here and twist it over so that the number and the white line are at 55. Uh, you're gonna set your camera dial right here to AV, AV. I don't know if you can see it, but you heard me, AV. Shot number one. Here we go, these first few shots, you're going to focus on the foreground object, the object that's closest to you. First shot, set your f-stop to 5.6, take the picture. Second shot, stay focused on that front object. Take a picture at 7.1. Third, take a picture at 5 8th, or sorry, 1 8th, F 1 8th. Next, take a picture at uh, F 10. Next, take a picture at F 16. Then take a picture at F 22. Now, focus on the middle object, not the cup, the middle object. You're gonna do the same photos. You're gonna take a shot at 5.6. You're gonna take a shot at 7.1. You're gonna take a shot at F 8. You're gonna take a shot at F10, you're gonna take a shot at F16, and then you're gonna take a shot at F22. Now, what I would do for focus, this will make your life easier. On your camera, on your lens, there's some little words right here and some little switches. One switch says AF, MF, autofocus, manual focus. I would set my camera to manual focus. Here's the problem though, I gotta take my eyeball and put it inside the camera and actually focus using this focusing ring. Okay, like this. You're in focus, now you're blurry. You're in focus, now you're blurry. You may set it to autofocus, but then you gotta come down here, you gotta push menu, you gotta find your focusing settings. It gets a little tricky to select what you want to focus on. So, I would encourage you, set your camera to manual focus, focus on the front object, the foreground object, using this focusing ring. You can email me and ask for help if you need it. Next photos. All right, now shutter speed priority, okay? Find something moving, it could be anything, cars, pets, fish, siblings, a model, anything that is constantly moving. Moving, moving, moving. Don't have them, just let them like run around, move around, okay? Watch cars drive by. It's gotta constantly be moving. You are going to photograph while the object is moving in effort to either show motion or stop motion, okay? Set your camera on the setting dial to TV, time value, which your time priority setting. Uh, and set your ISO to auto and take the following photos in this order. Ready? Set your camera to half a second. It looks dumb. They should just do one slash two half, but it's uh, zero quotation five. I don't know. That's just what they do. Uh, half speed, take a photo. Of that same object, now if they're moving around, they're not in the same location, that's okay. You're gonna take that exact same photo at one quarter of a second. You're gonna take that exact same photo, one fifteenth of a second, then one thirtieth, one sixtieth, one twenty fifth, one two fiftieth, one four hundredth, one six hundred fortieth, and then one one thousandth of a second. You're gonna take it faster and faster and faster and faster and see if you can stop that motion. Now, if your camera is set to TV and your ISO is set to auto, you don't have to worry about getting a correct exposure with any of your other settings. It will automatically do it for you because you have the camera set to TV, okay? Woo, y'all. That's a lot.
That is so much work. It's Friday. You don't have to do anything else but this in your other class. So enjoy this photo uh, shot, this photo shoot. This is a big assignment. Big. It's going to be bigger than any other assignment we've done so far in the grade book. So if you don't do it, it's going to hurt you bad. So get this assignment done. Get it posted in the Google Slideshow. In the handout, it says how I want you to lay out your Google Slides, guys. Uh, good luck. I hope you have fun. Email me if you have questions. Uh, this is the tough one. This is really, really hard stuff. If you take my advanced class or if you are in my advanced class, you're learning this again in advance. I teach it in the beginning. I teach it in photo three, four. I teach it again in photo five, six. And I review it often. This is a skill that you should have so that you can manipulate your images how you want. All right, guys. Have a wonderful weekend. I will see you Monday or whatever day this is.